My name is Lily Hunter, Product Manager at Roland DGA. And with me, I have... Terry Newhouse with Universal Woods. And today's presentation is commercial applications, dye sublimation applications with Chromalux. So thank you for joining us. So first off, let's take a look at our agenda. So we're going to review the dye sublimation process. Now, even if you're already doing sublimation on fabrics, uh, it, it's a little bit different for, for rigid substrates, some things to take into consideration. Uh, and first off, it's um, definitely not as forgiving as you would um, dye sublimate onto fabrics. Fabrics can hide a lot of flaws, but rigid substrates will definitely show a lot of flaws. So uh, we'll take a look at that. And then we'll learn more about various Chromalux products for commercial applications. And then we will look at some of the potential markets. All right, so first off, let me just quickly go over what dye sublimation is. So it is a process that goes from solid to gas while bypassing the liquid phase, very much like dry ice. So the big block of dry ice right there kind of represents the printing part. You are printing um, on transfer paper and the inks become solid and at the heat press, is where that sublimation takes place. So we're gonna talk specifically about transfer dye sublimation. And basically what that is, is you are printing onto a transfer paper. And the purpose of that paper is just to hold the inks and go ahead and transfer it from the paper onto your blank. So once again, sublimation process takes place at the heat press. So you don't get the awesome instant gratification as you normally would do with um, direct printing um, or e even eco-solvent printing. So I'm going to go ahead and do a quick demonstration in regards to um, some sublimation. So what I have with me here is we're going to go ahead and sublimate onto this maple wood. All right. So you will have the protective film. Be careful not to touch the surface because you don't want the oils or dirt from your fingers to get onto the surface. Now, should you have anything go on the surface, you can do a quick clean with some, um, isopropyl alcohol and uh, wipe it down clean and that will give it um, a nice clean surface. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick pre-press. Um, because this is wood, it's very easy for it to absorb excess moisture. So I'm going to do a quick pre-press for about 20 seconds. And the whole purpose of it is to try to get extra moisture out as much as possible. Because the thing that kills sublimation is pretty much excess moisture. And because you don't want a steaming process where, you look it, where it reveals steam marks, you want to start with as nice and dry of a surface as possible. All right, so in case you're wondering what I was doing with all the different layers, um, the paper was pretty much to protect the, um, the platen, so there's no um, stray inks transferring here and there. The extra piece of fabric over it was actually just to help absorb the moisture. All right, so I'm just kind of cleaning the edges because I can feel the moisture from um, that quick pressing process. So everything is cooling off. Um, the edges are dry. So now I'm going to go ahead and sublimate. So I have this pre-printed image already. And just like any sublimation, it is printed in mirror. And so what I'm going to do is first I look at the back to see, to make sure I align where the notches are because that's where it's going to help um, where you're going to hang it so you don't want to sublimate it and realize, oh my goodness, I just did it upside down. So, um, and usually there is a bleed in regards to what you're printing to just make sure you have enough space. For this, I don't want any movement of the paper because as we know, if there's any movement or shifting, you are going to get ghosting. So I'm just using some heat transfer tape 
So that way it's heat resistant. And I'm just going to just pretty much um, fold in all the edges and, and stuff like that. So now this is just on a small scale. Obviously, um, on a large scale, you will have a larger um, flatbed press. So the smaller ones can, can accommodate up to a 30 by 40 panel. And you have large ones that probably can accommodate up to four feet by eight feet. All right, so I'm just, so the print side is up facing the top of the heat platen. I'm going through my whole layering process. And for this particular product, it is going to take approximately two minutes for the sublimation to take place. So you wanna make sure that this material heats up it's about 400 degrees. That's the magic number where sublimation takes place, where that solid turns into gas. And with this wood, it doesn't heat up as quickly as metal. So instead of 60 seconds, you need a little bit more time. But go through the um, Unisub or Chromelux website. There are definitely guides in regards to how long to press depending on the product. So Terry, so we're doing this on a small scale. Any advice on a large scale or anything like that? Yeah, when you go from the small scale to the large scale, uh, you're gonna have to increase your time because uh, as you suck the heat out of the, the press, uh, you need the press needs more time to build that heat back up. So, right, right, so, so you wanna make sure all the inks release from the paper. Yeah, so typically on, on something like this, you would go from two minutes that on the small press to maybe six minutes on a large press. On aluminum, you're less than a minute on, on a small press, and on a large press, you're talking about four minutes. Absolutely, so I've done the 30 by 40, and I think for those, I'm a closer to about two, two and a half minutes, um, just to make sure that everything um, sublimates well. Um, the telltale sign is if it looks very dull and there's still a lot of inks left over on the paper, the transfer paper, you haven't given enough time for the whole sublimation process to take place. Now the flip side is if you leave it in too long and it looks dull, well, it's just continued with the gassing out process. So, um, so if your paper looks like it released all the inks and your prints are still dull, it could be that you also have it in too long. All right, so we're at the end of our two minutes. Ooh. Okay, so um, normally we have gloves, but for this particular product is not as crazy hot <laughs> so as metal. So I'm able to go ahead and just remove it without um, gloves. So we're just going to remove the tape. And I'm still doing the best I can because it's still hot and sublimation still takes place. We want to make sure we're not doing jolting things around because we want to avoid any type of ghosting. So there you have it. See the inks releasing from the paper. And here's the end product. So I chose the, um, the maple just because I love the wood grains and things that you can do with it. And there is a reason why I ch did this graphic. So uh, we'll go over that um, shortly. It has to do with the coating and, and you're not limited to just doing images only, um, like uh, photographs or artwork. You can do things where you can actually write on. Okay, so, um, so those, that's just a quick demo in regards to the sublimation process. And now we are going to just go over the differences between sublimation and direct printing. So here are the advantages of sublimation. So you have the full color designs, it's extremely durable. And I'm gonna emphasize that a few times. This is one of the things that I love about the product is the durability. It's very easy to clean. It complements your current business. So if you are printing with EcoSolvent on vinyl, this complements your business. You have a UV printer, you're printing direct to the substrates, this complements it. You can get very high margins still, easy to produce, 
and thousands of products you can choose from. So we're going to take a look. Terry's going to show us the difference between the direct print as well as sublimated and go over the details. This, this is a direct print and when you look at it by itself, it looks fairly nice. But when you, when you compare that to a Chromalux sublimated print, you can see that the color definition is much greater, the color gamut is much greater, uh, the durability is, is better. You can see, let's see, which finger is this here? Right here below my finger, you can see that these are show samples that we've carried to and from a couple of shows, and, and we pack them up good before and after each show to ship them around the country. Uh, you can see it's starting to chip out a little bit right here. Uh, and that's the problem with the direct print is, is that you're relying on the ink to get adhesion to the substrate. Uh, whereas with our product, we in the factory put, put the coating on first and then the ink goes into the coating. And that's really important too is the durability and also the quality of your products really depends on the coating. So one of the questions I get asked a lot is, gee, can I take any old piece of aluminum, go get one of those liquid coaters, liquid um, polyester coating, because you need the polyester for sublimation, can I just brush it on or spray it on? And I said, yeah, you absolutely can do that, but the problem is if there are highs and lows in your coating and it's not a smooth surface, you are going to see it in your image. So. Uh, there's no way of hiding that and then the whole durability too. Yes. So if, if that polyester coating starts rubbing off, guess what? So does your image. Yes. So you definitely don't have as much durability. All right, so um, real quick, let me go over, have Terry go over um, the company and, and we can go over some of the things that they do. Just a little history about Chromalux products. The company started as Universal Woods. That's the parent company. We were a furniture manufacturing company that got caught up in the exodus of manufacturing to China uh, when we were developing the sublimation product. And uh, about 23 years ago, uh, we developed the Unisub brand of product, which is mostly designed for small things, name badges, picture frames, that sort of thing. A lot of good promotional items, ornaments. Absolutely. A lot of great things. Uh, and, and every six to eight months we made improvements to our process over the course of those 23 years. Um, <clears throat> about uh, eight or ten years ago we came up with uh, a line of product for the professional photographers and that was the Chromalux branded product. Uh, it has a little bit thicker coating, better depth of image, better clarity, better color uh, penetration. Uh, and, and better fade resistance. So that was a key in, ingredient to the professional photographers is to have really good fade resistance. Uh, not, that our, not that our Unisub is bad, it's just that Chrome Lux will last uh, five, six, seven times as long as what our Unisub product will last. Right, right. So you have something that say, so a Unisub product typically lasts for how long? Uh, before you start to see fade indoors, uh, it, it might be 10 or 15 years before you start to see it. So that's still pretty durable. Um, and then Chromalux goes above and beyond um, the 10 years. Yeah, it depends upon which. We had a number of labs, outside labs, look at our product. Mm -hmm. And it depends upon the math that you do because it starts with the fact that that they use a Kodak paper and Kodak says 50 years. Mm. Uh, our, some labs say that ours, our product will last 50% longer than that. Mm -hmm. Other labs will say that it lasts three times as long as that. All right, so, um, and that's really neat. And then you guys also have resin deck. Yes. Which is not related to the sublimation market, but it's still part of yes. the umbrella of Universal Woods. Because, because we make tough coatings, one of the things that we went to is our resin deck brand, which is a warehouse flooring, the second, third, fourth floor of a warehouse. You walk on a piece of wood that's been coated. Uh, our, our wood coating uh, can take uh, two million cycles of a robot running exactly over the same spot before you start to see any wear. Uh, and that's where the expertise um, and technology comes in with your coating for sublimation as well. Granted, yes. it may not last 
um, with the two million times for a robot to go up and down, <laughs> right. but still very durable. So this is hands off way better than if you're going to say, hey, I'm just going to save some money. I'm going to go buy me some liquid polyester and coat it on ourselves. So, so that's one of the good things about it. And also, this is kind of neat. Um, you guys are the world's leading manufacturer of hard products, whether it's for sublimation or wood mezzanine decking. Yes. So you guys have been there a long time. Been there, done that, done Absolutely. a lot of different things. All right. So here are some of the expertise. So share with me or our audience some of the things that you guys do. I mean, we, we see ourselves as a coating company to begin with. Uh, so we, we listen to the customer's needs. And that's where sublimation started. We listened to uh, a few people that were trying to get into hard surface sublimation to distribute hard surface sublimation products. And we listened to what their needs were, and then we developed a coating for them. Um, so we are a coating company that, that develops coatings for right. hard surfaces. Now, for flexible engineer coatings, and um, I, I want to show you what that means. So we do have some products of um, Chrome Lux products versus competitors because once again we get those questions of are there any other people that can do this? Can I get it cheaper? Because you know we've all seen those Groupon ads where send us your family photo or whatever photo and we'll print it this huge 30 by 40 for $20 and you know what that's not a Chrome Lux product or even universal um, or any of the universal wood products. And there are some reasons why. So, so I, I love some of these tests that you guys have. One, wow. of, one of the tests that we do is, is a ball drop test, where we take a steel ball from 10 foot up and drop it down and, and hit, our, hit our target. And what you want to do, to, that proves whether you have good adhesion or not. Uh, you can see this is our competitor's product. Uh, when the ball dented the, the aluminum, it's been flaking off. You can even see where we just drill that hole in the corner and put a chain through it. Uh, it's starting to, to chip off. Right. Whereas, whereas our product, yes, the coating is broken, but the coating stays with the aluminum. So this is where the flexible. Deformation. Yes. Yeah. So, all right, so that's one of the differences. So another, here another, are a couple. Another difference that you'll see is that um, there is a color difference here. This is, this is the yellow that our customers have. And this yellow may be uh, a couple of shades darker or a couple of shades lighter. They have a lot of variation in their manufacturing process. Whereas ours, our coating, the white point, we've developed this over years of, of research. We've, and we, we hit that point very well. Yes, yeah, so you definitely want to start with a nice white point. The last slide that I have to show you. This is pretty amazing. Is, is how does it fade? Um, you can see that. Uh, this is this is our competitors. It starts out with a uh, with a nice blue. And this is unexposed, but very shortly uh, it turns this guy's suit to a to a purple. You can see the grill changes colors. The, the the hood of the car changes colors. Whereas ours, we have that same line down the middle of of the guy's suit, and it's really really difficult to see or even pick up in any kind of a meter. And this is um, where I want to bring up that, that analogy of the, the whole um, Groupon specials as well. You, when you get it, can it look nice? Absolutely. You, you leave it up for a while, you hang it up, you're proud of it, and oh goodness, that fading starts. So yes. that's where the difference is. All right, so let's go into some of the other products. The, uh, oh, main important thing, everything is made in the USA. So you guys are located in, in Louisville, Kentucky. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so some of the options that we have, and we have samples to show as well. We've got aluminum, steel, hardboard. So, so these all have the coating. So let's take a look at some of, of these um, different ones as well. These, these are the, the glossy coatings. They come in both, both a white and a silver. 
Yeah, so depending on your image, uh, you know, I, I love sublimating on either a white or even the, the metal, just, you know, depending on the image, some just looks great with that silver. It just gives a different look to it. So that's the gloss, and you guys also have um, other finishes. So in case you don't want a glossy finish. We have a matte finish. So if you want to mimic more of that matte finish, very similar to that direct print that we saw, um, you can have that matte finish, but still the colors pop so much nicer. Or you can go in between with the semi-gloss, where you don't get as much, much of the glare, but you get the nice crisp clarity that you get with a gloss image. Absolutely. And Terry, you were sharing too, in regards to just the brightness and colors too, in regards to as, as we age and our eyes look at things and colors, you know, it's nice to have that visual, that extra brightness and things like that. So it's more attention grabbing, but also for older eyes like ours, um, yeah, it helps. Every little bit helps. <laughs> also, we have hardboard. So let's take a look at some of the hardboard samples. Yeah. All right. So why would you go with a hardboard? Uh, it's a price point issue. Okay. Uh, the, the aluminum is, is a much more costly product. The hardboard, uh, it'll be a little bit thicker. Uh, and it'll be, it'll be uh, you can laser cut it to give it a nice black edge. Uh, but the cost on the hardboard is, is close to a third of the price of what aluminum would cost you. But the look of it too, if, if you didn't know better, if you didn't look at the surface, it images as beautifully as the aluminum. Absolutely. All right. Okay, so let's take a look at some other products as well. So we have different wood products, some fiberglass, multi-purpose phenolic, and some unique products. So, all right, so we have different examples of those as well. This is an MDF, a, a medium density fiber board. Again, it's, it's a nice product. It has a little bit more orange peel. Professional photographers uh, kind of rejected that. That's why we went to the aluminum with the professional right. photographers. But then if you're not using it for that application, it still looks great. Yeah, for signage or something like that, it's, it's an ideal product. And actually the Europeans like the MDF much better than the aluminum. Right. It's a matter of <laughs> culture, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is a moisture resistant MDF. Uh, and this is great for high moisture environments like uh, your tabletop uh, or in a bathroom. You can make bathroom uh, the, the going around the mirror. Uh, you can decorate around your mirror. So, uh, and honestly, um, whether it's bathrooms, kitchens, anywhere that there's going to be a lot of high moisture, that would be ideal. And, yes. and we talked about the durability and the coating and, you know, we'll, we'll go over it some more, but just even the cleaning of it too. So we'll, we'll show some of that later. This is the clear maple that we demonstrated earlier. I love looking at, um, seeing the different wood grains and stuff, that one. This is a, a piece of steel with our dry erase coating on it. Uh, most of the applications for steel, you'd want to be able to stick stuff to it, production scheduling or, or um, that sort of thing where you want the dry erase features. And our coating is a little bit different between the dry erase and our standard Chromalux coatings. Technically, um, you can use the products as dry erase, but over time, after you clean it, there is going to be a little bit of residue. So that's where this product comes in handy because you don't have that. And because it's steel, Little magnets can stick to it, so you have other applications that um, you can use with it as well. This is a piece of phenolic. Uh, if you're used to dealing, if you have cut in uh, tabletops or that sort of thing, uh, that's what this material is made from. Uh, so a lot of people like this because they're used to dealing with phenolic in their everyday life. And it's flexible as well. Yes. And that's where the flexible coating comes in handy too, because you, if you're going to do something flexible like that, the last thing you need is it, um, to start cracking and, and stuff. And this is a piece of fiberglass reinforced plastic. I, again, it's it's got some flex. It's got some flex to it, not a great deal amount, but uh, uh, and and you would use this where where you want a really cheap substrate. All right, and um, I have um, also a fiberglass product that um, we 
tested. So this is more translucent. So it has more of that rice paper look to it. So it does have all the different textures in it. So I was testing around with sublimating on it. So one side, I just did one layer of ink um, just to see how transparent it is. And then on the other side, uh, we did two layer of ink. So um, I printed this with our RT640 dye sublimation printer and it comes bundled with ErgoSoft. So our profiles default to one layer of ink, but you can choose multiple layers just to have more density. So that's what I mean by one layer or two layers. I didn't do um, sublimate on both sides. It's just adding more ink. And with that, I wanted to show you guys something. Um, as you saw, I did a Sharpie marker that um, where I just wrote one layer, two layers, okay? So with a permanent marker, it doesn't come off right away, but here's a trick. So when they showed me this, I thought this was fabulous. So this is just your regular dry erase marker. So just go over that. So you guys saw me try to wipe it originally, the Sharpie without it, and it didn't come off. I, I could have um, exerted some more, but why do that? Um, there you go. Wiped clean. Oop. So actually this part, just a little bit more. So this is part of the coating that is so amazing that um, I, I wouldn't try it with the direct print no. <laughs> at all. And here's also another demonstration just to show you the durability. All right, I'm going to put some gloves on for this one. Don't try this at home, kids or adults or anyone with a brain. <laughs> but OK, so I have our EcoSolvent cleaning solution. It's very, it's, uh, very close to. Um, well, MEK or acetone. So this is some serious stuff. Um, at one of the trade shows that I was at where I was helping with teardown, one of the solvent cartridges cracked open and my phone was there. Thankfully, I had the auto box, one of those thick cases, um, so it melted my case. But my phone was awesome, So, that, but it did melt everything else. So we're going to use this. I'm going to put some onto a cloth. And you know what? I'm going to take one of the other ones that's really bright just to show um, that I'm rubbing, I'm cleaning, and the colors aren't coming off. All right? So just in case, um, you know what? Let me show you the white side again. And this time I'll just maybe go a little crazy. I'll maybe pour a little bit more on here. I'm just doing it slowly because I don't want it spilling all over the place. All right, so I have a nice big drop. OK, so now I'm just going to clean it. And actually, I think I just cleaned some of the, the markers. But also, there you go. Durable. Durable. Definitely won't try it on, on that piece. So if you're going to take it back to um, a trade show, I don't want to ruin your piece. Yes, <laughs> that piece you. at all. <laughs> thank you. Also, um, another product that's unique, let me take off these gloves, is the flooring. All right, so we did this for our trade show booth as well. And it has a nice texture on it, so it's anti-slip. And we even cut it to um, the shape of the space that we were doing. And then it, just like any flooring, it has the grooves where it can just lock in and totally durable. Uh, you can dance the night away in high heels on this, and you're not going to mar the surface. So, um, yeah, and, Terry's and, been and known to dance on, with high heels on these. So. Absolutely, every yeah. Friday night. Every Friday night. That's a different webinar we'll do. Okay. <laughs> the, the other thing is this coating, again, we're a coating company. So I've got a customer that looked at this coating and said, hey, this doesn't fingerprint compared to gloss and materials that you have. Um, can I get this on tempered hardboard so that I can make headboards out of it? Absolutely, that, that's what we do. You're, we're a coating company, we can mix and match. So, and also that applies to the, um, um, the dry erase. Yes. Not on the flooring, of course, but for um, other products, you can definitely put dry erase on there. And I know that you guys also offer in different edges and shapes, but you can also cut to different shapes. So once more, some some samples from trade show. So what we did was we pre-cut these while it still had the protective film on it. 
and then we um, removed the protective film and sublimated. So we, ha we had a fish theme, if you didn't figure that out, from the flooring <laughs> and this. So here's one that, my gosh, it doubles as um, a weapon. So, and then we have my favorite one. Yeah, we named each of the fish, so this is a lily fish. So <laughs> each of us in product management um, kind of named the fish. So that, that was the lily fish, so save the best for last. But um, let me show you in regards to if you are going to cut, what should you do? So here's just an example of, of fabrication, shearing versus routing. So Terry, explain what we're seeing here. Yeah, what you're seeing is the sheared edge, how rough that looks. Well, that's all going to translate into the, into the cut onto the surface. And when you magnify it 100 times, you are going to see a little jagged edge along there. Whereas when it's routed, that edge is nice and smooth. Uh, and you'll have less chance for chipping along that edge. Right. So, and and then also it, it, it you know helps the durability. All right. So I know that um, we've looked at the product. So let's take the last few moments to look at the different commercial applications. So the quick tip is consider the market when picking your products, whether it's Chromalux substrates or Unisub. So basically, how price sensitive is your audience? So. Who um, typically are the price sensitive folks? The, the people that do uh, restaurants and, and hotels are usually the most price sensitive. They're also the product doesn't have to last as long because they're going to, in, in 10 years, 7 to 10 years, they're going to change out everything and redecorate. Uh, and that's where our Unisub product would be great for that type of uh, application. Absolutely, absolutely. So let's take a look at some of the commercial applications. So these are all um, MDF. So you guys have the option of giving fire rated versus standard. Yes, if, if there is an application that requires a fire rated board underneath so that you could decorate hallways and that sort of thing, yes, we can accommodate the fire rated material. All right. So here's just some different applications that you can do. Um, some more applications. So, okay, so this is where um, those images at the, um, the Papa John's and the grill, this is where it comes in handy, especially getting the moisture resistant yes. um, coating. Um, so the last thing you want is your graphics to fall off yes. um, near a hot area and stuff. All right, some more MDF. So these are in museums and schools, and, and they can also get that coating where you don't get all of the fingerprints and stuff on there. Yes. And then the, 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 ni the nice thing that, that museums absolutely love about our product is that when you go into a museum, you've seen somebody has changed the words on the museum by scratching off certain letters. Making um, do some dirty, naughty words. Not me. Uh, with, with our product, <laughs> you won't be able to do that. All right. So let's see. Yes. Some other cool things. Oh, hardboard. So this looks like it's in a hotel. It's a two-story display that they change out every season. Yeah, so, so that makes sense where you can go with um, hardboard versus the aluminum, the, the cost savings, but it still looks beautiful. And aluminum. So, you know, a lot of times you think of aluminum, the chromalux, you're thinking high-end photography type applications, but it makes great signage as well. So, so this is at a Mercedes dealership, so it's like functional art. Yes. It is art. They, they kind of thought of it as art when they put it in. Yeah, and here we have art as well <coughs> in the elevator. So why did they go that route versus, you know, some cut vinyl or, or something? Well, they, they, they saw our product in, in the, um, at a show, and they then went out and purchased what they thought was our product, but they bought direct print. And they put the direct print in, and the next day, mm -hmm. the manager of the hotel called me up and said, hey, this, this isn't like you showed me at the show. And so we got to discussing and found out who they did their printing and found out that they weren't using our product. Uh, they ultimately put our product in a, a week later, uh, and, and here it's been about a year since I've heard from her. Uh, and at that time, she said, it looks as good today as the day they put it in. All right. So then we have the steel with the dry erase boards as well. So mm -hmm. great for, you know, hospitals and, and schools, and, schools and, and things like that, going through all the cleaning and tabletops as well. So this is at um, 
a local um, restaurant here in Southern California. So they have that in their, you know, their patio, their covered patio, but it's been out there. They've cleaned it, had it out there, you know, at closing where, you know, they're not bringing everything in. So it's, it's out there in the, the, um, the Southern California um, elements. And, and, and when, he, when he cleans his area, he stacks the tables every night. So they get quite a bit of wear. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And for those that want to, they can dance on the tables too. Yes. <laughs> so uh, we do thank you for your time and joining us and have a great day. Bye. Thank you.